good morning everyone. It's Wednesday on RTO with Ian. Uh, Wednesday means Marathon Wednesday and we have got a marathon today. We are doing UFO. Uh, we're doing UFO because last week they announced they are doing their final shows next year. After 53 years of rocking they are calling it a day. So um, I thought it would be quite nice to show my appreciation to one of my favourite rock bands uh, of all time. They have been pretty consistent all through their career, made some great songs, great anthems. So UFO were formed in 1968. They've had uh, quite a transition. They become, they started off as like space rock, and then they were part of the new wave of heavy metal a little bit, and they finally end up being more bluesy than rocky, and they are brilliant. Um, current lineup is Vinnie Moore. It's been with them a little while. Neil Carter, who's worked with so many different people. Um, most prominently um, Gary Moore I've seen him a few times I've seen UFO a couple of times uh, they've got bass player Rob DeLuca and Andy Parker who's drum with them on and off through the years sadly we've lost a couple of members uh, and of course we've got Michael Schenker still going strong uh, so pretty good line of people. So over <laughs> so over the fifty three years, they released twenty one studio albums and one EP, and I am including that EP in this ranking because it's got some pretty good tracks on it. So we've got twenty two releases to look at, and. We better start because this is going to be a long one. But before we start, we're going to wet the whistle. Right, we can start now. So, coming in at number 22 is the debut album um, UFO One, released in 1970, and this featured. Phil Mogg on the vocals, Mick Bolton on guitar, Pete Way on the bass, and Andy Parker on the drums. Okay, first track, Unidentified Flying Object. This is an instrumental. It's the best track on the album, one of the shortest ones as well. It's got some. Mick Bolton is a good guitar player. Uh, Pete Way, that bass is already churning out them riffs Andy Parker solid as you like really good little track okay the next track Boogie for George again this has got some amazing guitar work from Mick Bolton um, Phil, Mo Phil Mogg's voice is not not as it became but it was you know there were signs of it it's not a bad little track actually. Uh, nice rock, old fashioned rock sound from the 70s, really good. Next track is Come On Everybody, Eddie Cochran. It's not the best version of this song. I'm sorry I don't like that version at all. Then we get Shake It About. Uh, got a great bass line from Pete Way. He comes up, he came up with some great bass lines. And again, Mick Bolton's guitar work is absolutely cracking. Our uh, next track is another cover, uh, Come Away Melinda, originally done by Harry Belafontaine in 63, but most of us know it as from Uriah Heep. Uh, it's not a bad version, but it's not a patch on Uriah Heep's version. Timothy, another good little rocker this is. The bass line from Pete Way again dominates this track. Amazing bass player and sadly missed. Um, Follow You Home. 
again more stunning work from Mick Bolton on this. He is, he was a good guitarist. I must look up and see what ever happened to Mick Bolton. Uh, Drinkle Pilton people. Not very good. I I don't like it. Uh, then we have another cover. Who do you love? Done by Bo Diddley, but uh, more known by The Doors. The only good thing about this is Andy Parker's drumming. They don't do this song justice at all. Um, and then the last track on the album is Evil. Uh, it's own okay, I suppose. On the whole, this is not. This is a half decent album. It's got some the the original stuff. There's some good stuff on it. Good solid stuff. You could see that potential there. But they've still got a long way to go. Uh, I don't play it that often. I mean, I played it when I was just when I was doing this, and it was enjoyable. So I'll give it an RTO ranking of six out of ten. Okay, coming in at number twenty-one is the second album released in nineteen seventy-one, UFO Two. So we've still got the original lineup of Phil Mogg, Mick Bolton, Pete Wayne, Andy Parker. Okay, first track, Silverbird. Again, more ripping guitar solos than Mick Bolton. Great little rock track that is. Uh, second track, Star Swarm. This is a epic. 18 minutes 54. This is very proggy space rock different moods, different textures, some great melodies in this and some fantastic guitar work and Phil's vocals are pretty good. I like this track a lot. Very very good. Third track, Prince Kajuku. Very solid track. Great guitar work on this. Another solid piece of work. Then we have the coming of Prince Kaju. Sort of carries on from the first song. Uh, Andy Parker's drumming in this is fabulous. Really, really good. Okay, the last track on here. It's another epic of 26 minutes. Flying. Uh, apart from the middle bit, which you've got Phil singing on and thing, it's not very inspiring. It's just too long and it's just. It's just a boring. You sort of get after about ten minutes, you, you want to fall asleep. It's just an excuse for Mick Bolton to just shred. And as much as he's a good guitarist, I don't want to hear fifteen minutes of it. Okay, it wasn't. It was a strong follow-up to the debut album. But as I said, you know, flying sort of is pretty naff you know I'd say 17 minutes of it is just pure guitar solo but for the rest of the album um, I've got some good tracks uh, very very good tracks and I'll give it an RTO ranking of 6.5 okay then coming in at number 20 I would say this is the, going to be the 22nd and last album by um, UFO. It was the first full covers album. The Salento Cuts released in 2007. And it's the last album that featured Paul Raymond before his sad death in 2019. So the lineup on this for this album was Phil Mogg on vocals, Vinnie Moore on guitars, Paul Raymond on keyboards, Robert DeLuca on bass and Andy Parker on the drums. This, you know my opinion of cover albums, I, you know, some of them are not very good, but this one is, this is very good. Um, first track on this one is Heart Full of Soul from the Yardbirds. This is a great version of it. Absolutely brilliant. Phil is 
great on this singing. Um, the second one is Break On Through to the other side, classic door song. Again, they do this one justice, and it just shows how strong Phil Mogg's voice is after all these years. Very, very, very good. Uh, the next cover they do is River of Deceit, which is by a band called uh, Mad Season. If you've never heard it, go and check it out, but this version is really good. Uh, it's very, very similar arrangement. They stick to the original song, and it is very, very good. The Pusher, from Stephen Wolf, of course. Really good version of this, uh, and Vinnie Moore's guitar solo is pretty good on it as well. Then another great track, Paper in the Fire from John Mellicamp. Uh, pretty good version of that as well. And then we get Rock Candy from Montrose. Absolutely brilliant version of this song. Uh, yes, we are doing Montrose eventually. We've got so many bands that people have asked for and friends have asked for but Montrose is on the list but I do like Rock Candy it's one of my favourite tracks by um, Montrose and UFO do this justice uh, the next one Mississippi Queen This I've heard lots of um, covers of this this is the best this is the best track on this album it's a great song for Mountain I did actually see Mountain on the same bill as uh, UFO at uh, Nedworth. And uh, to hear Mississippi Queen live by Mountain was fantastic. Uh, great song, and yes, we are doing Mountain as well. Uh, very, very good cover. Love that track. Okay, next song is Ain't No Sunshine of Bill Withers, of course. It's a little bit different to um, Bill Withers but it is a fine fine cover and Phil Mogg sings it's really good uh, Honey Bee obviously from Tom Petty and a very very good song and it was a very good interpretation of this song from Tom uh, Vinnie Moore again really good guitar work then we get to Rolling Stone from Robin Trower. Another great version of this song. It's a great song anyway. And again, they did it justice. Then they, they do Just Got Paid. Of course, from ZZ Top. Great version. If you're going to cover a ZZ Top track, make sure you do it right. And your FO did. Uh, and when the last track is It's My Life, obviously from The Animals, another great, great cover. This is an album, a cover album that I love. UFO did every song justice. I'm not going to say how much I love this because I am going to do a show of all of bands that have done cover albums and I'm going to rank my best, my favourite of them. So that's for another show. But this is a f solid album, and I do play it a lot. It's one of the most played of my um, cover albums I've got. So I'll give it an RTO ranking of 7 out of 10. That's how good I think it is. Okay, coming in at number 19. Uh, 18th album, released in 2006, The Monkey Puzzle. Uh, it, this album remark, returned a founding drummer Andy Parker and it was the last of, to feature founding bassist Pete Way. So the lineup on this was Phil Mogg, Vinnie Moore, Paul Raymond, Pete Way and Andy Parker. So you've got near enough a classic lineup of UFO. Okay, the first track, Hard Being Me, a stonking blues number from UFO. Great opening riffs, the slide guitar is great, Andy Parker's drumming as ever is on the on the top notch, and Paul Raymond, great keyboards in this, fantastic track. Heavenly Body, great drum intro from Andy Parker, 
and Pete Way's bass is there as well. These two together were brilliant. Andy Parker and Pete Way, great combination, great engine room of a great rock band. Terrific song. Um, some other guy, got some electric piano in this, harmonica, great bluesy track. Uh, one of my favourites from UFO. Uh, who's fooling you? This has got a bit of the choir boys to it. Very, very good track though. Fantastic song. Black and Blue, solid rock track. Terrific solo from Vinnie Moore. Uh, Drink Too Much, solid track. Not a bad one at all. It's not the best one, but it is a you know, solid track. World Cruise, love this acoustic -y start, and then it goes into a great little bright bluesy rocker. Superb. Down by the river, another great track, solid from UFO. Goodbye to you. Unfortunately, this is one song that I'm not very keen on. It's all right, I suppose, but it's not my favourite. Rolling Man, love this. Andy Parker's drumming is brilliant, and halfway through, Phil mentions his name. <laughs> It's Mr. Andy Parker. It is fantastic. And Phil's voice is just electric on this track. Superb. Uh, probably my favourite track on the album as well. Absolutely stonking. And the final track on this album, Kingston Town. Right, it's got nothing to do with UV40s. Different song, different words. This is quite bluesy. Great track. Another solid album from UFO. Uh, I just love every, every album. It's very hard to rank these because they're all consistent. And apart from one or two odd tracks, most of them are pretty good tracks. And I love the later years of UFO as much as I love the early years. I just love this band. Um, great album, listen to it quite a lot. So I'll give this an RTO ranking of 7.5. Oh, drawing up already. Oh dear. Right, coming in at number 18 then. 19th album, released in 2009, The Visitor. Uh, not a bad album at all. Um, it's got Phil Mark on vocals, of course, Vinnie Moore on guitars, Paul Raymond, keyboards and guitars, Andy Parker on drums, and they hadn't got a bass player at the time, so they brought in a session guy called Pete Bitchy. Okay, Saving Me. Great start. Steely slide guitar, acoustic guitar. And then goes into this driving bluesy heavy rock track. Great stuff. On the waterfront, again another solid bluesy track from UFO. Great riffs in this. Awesome bass line. This guy's pretty good on the bass. So basically this is what it says on the tin. Then we get my favourite track on the album, Hell Driver. The drums on this are absolutely banging. That's all I can describe it as. Absolutely driving riffs, heavy. Phil Mogg's voice on this is incredible. He's one of the singers from that, you know, that his voice has not wavered at all. Just got a little bit deeper, but it's still strong. He's a fine singer, is Phil Mogg. Then we get Stop Breaking Down. It's okay, it's not the best track, but it sits nicely on the album. Rock Ready, another great blues track. It's just awesome, I do love these tracks. You wanna tap your foot along to this all the time. It's great, great track. Living Proof. It's okay, not one of the better tracks, but still 
listenable. Can't buy a thrill again. These are a little bit weak. These last ones, they're okay. I think these are these are a bit fillery. I think they, I think they were running out of ideas. Forsaken, okay, it's okay, but I wouldn't call this brilliant hole either. But Villain and Thieves is great. It's got a dirty rock riff at the start. Uh, great bass line and the drums are solid on this good good track and then Stranger in the Town again great opening riff from Vinnie Moore and great keys from Paul Raymond on here what a keyboard player he was uh, fantastic stuff but well there's, there's some weaker songs on this you can always guarantee I guess I said UFO do put out a consistent album um, and there's some great tracks on this and I'll give it an RTO ranking of 7.8 ok coming in at number 17 is the 21st studio album and it's the most re recent album of original material released in 2015 A Conspiracy of Stars this features Phil Mogg, Vinnie Moore, Paul Raymond, Rob DeLuca and Andy Parker. Solid album. The Killing Kind. Opening riff for this song is awesome. Phil singing on this is just mind blowing. Absolutely belter of a track. Run Boy Run. Another solid track. This, this is one of them tracks it's, it's uh, as good as the classic tracks great great rocker then we get one of my favourite songs by the band period it's called The Ballad of the Left Hand Gun this is bluesy it's got lots of sly guitars in Phil's voice is killer on this track uh, I've, put it, I've put it in the playlist if you've never heard it listen to it because it is an absolutely brilliant track uh, then we get Sugarcane solid rock track Devil's in in the detail nice work on this uh, it's got little bits of that rock space rock in this really good track it's Precious Cargo not a, my favourite track but it's got a nice melody to it uh, very very good track uh, The Real Deal solid UFO rocks on what more do you need one and only awesome awesome track bass line from DeLuca it's as good as one of Pete Ways Phew. sounds really good Messiah of Love uh, bog standard rock song from USO pretty solid Rolling, rolling. Not a bad track at all. Like that one as well. Uh, King of the Hill. Nice little rocker. Again, another solid album. Some outstanding tracks. There are a couple of mediocre ones on there, but it's a very, very enjoyable album. And I'll give it an RTO ranking of 8 out of 10. So even though it's at number 17, it still gets a high ranking. Okay, coming up number 16, it's the 12th album, released in 1985. This is the tour that I saw them on a couple of times. Saw them in Birmingham and at Nedworth, Misdemeanor. Uh, this is a typical 80s rock album, uh, but it's got some good, good stuff on it. This fake that featured Phil Mogg on vocals, Tommy McLennan on lead guitar, Paul Raymond on keyboards, Paul Gray and Jim Simpson who had drummed with Magnum. Pretty good. It was a good lineup, and that was a very good. Well, when I saw them, that was very very good shows. Uh, first track this time, too much 80s for me. Uh, and it didn't sound right. <laughs> uh, one Heart, apart from the bass line and guitar riffs, it's got 
that horrible keyboard sound from the 80s that I just hate. Uh, then you get one of the better songs and one of my favourite songs, Night Run. Uh, saw them form this at Nebworth, of course, and Birmingham, and it is a terrific, it's, ter it's better live, much better live, and there's a couple of live versions on some of their live albums of this track, and it is a solid track, one of my favourites by the band. Uh, the Only Ones, it's one of their mediocre tracks on the album. Mean Streets, great rocker, great guitar solo, awesome. Name of Love, it's okay in places, got a great rock beat, but then it slides in some of that 80s rubbish. Blue, this is not a bad track. Drums are riff the gif guitar riffs are okay, but them drums are that horrible sound that they thought that, that needed to be on rock albums. Uh, Dream the Dream, worst track on the album. Sounds all wrong, too commercial, that horrible rock drip beat that no one likes. I must find out who decided that. That's my mission in life. Find out what plonker thought that rock drums should sound clean. <laughs> then we get the brilliant Heaven's Gate. Absolute corker that is. Then we get a wonderful track, Reckless. Classic song from uh, UFO. It's got that slow build and then it goes into this great rocker like some of the out on later albums. Okay, as I said this is not the best produced album but I think this is an album that should be remastered. I'll tell you, you'll understand why when as we go through the list but I think take out a few bits, add a few bits in and you've got a pretty solid album. I mean I like the tracks, I just don't like the production on some of them. But because of they are really good tracks, um, I've forgotten about, you know, forget the production and I still give it an RTO ranking of 8.3. Okay coming in at number 15 is the 12th album released in February 2012 uh, Seven Deadly this is a really solid album very very good album uh, features Phil Mogg, Vinnie Moore Paul Raymond, Andy Parker and Lars, Lars Lehman on the bass first track Flight Night this is a great track. This is Vinnie Moore's, one of Vinnie Moore's best tracks. Really good guitarist. His guitar work on this track is great. Great solid track from UFO. Wonderland, really good rocker. Got some really heavy riffs in it. Uh, Phil Mogg sounds as fantastic as ever. Mojo Town. Oh, this has got a great riff on it. It's got one of them catching hooks that you just can't get your, out your head and a screeching solo from Vinnie Moore. Terrific. Angel Station. It's not my favourite track on the album. It's listenable, but it's... I'd say it's one of the weaker tracks on this one. Um, Year of the Gun. It's got a nice catchy riff again, quirky little guitar pieces, not a bad track at all. The Last Stone Rider, another foot tapping great. Phil again sounds brilliant. It's a really good track. Still Yourself, solid track, it's not spectacular but still very good. Burn Your House Down, very good track. Again, catchy hooks. It's got some nice backing vocals on this. Don't know. I can't find who done them. It's pretty good. Very solid track. Then we get the fear. 
this again is one of the best tracks in fact it's the best track on the album bluesy sound something that the UFO managed to make their own towards the end of their career it's got nice harmonica in this it is a great great track uh, then we got Waving Goodbye another good track Bit middle, it's a middle of the road sounding track but very good Other Men's Wives, great drumming from Andy Parker again catchy blues riffs in this track very very good let me get one of my favourite songs off this album Bag of Blues this is brilliant it's done in it's piano and it sounds like that it now if you've watched films like anything from the, the gangster films from the, from the 20s in Chicago I mean the sting you got that piano and all that no no not the thing it's very very much like that and I've, I was, I've been to Chicago and I've heard someone sing and play piano like this. It's terrific and that's why I love it. Uh, this has got to be one of the best albums from the Vinnie Moore era of UFO. Uh, so I'll give it an RTO ranking of 8.6. Okay, coming in at number 14. Well, this is a first for me. Um, I'm editing this show and I've realised I've totally missed out an album we're not all perfect so this is where it should have come in this should have been number 14 but I thought I'd just put it in um, so coming in at the, the just put the, this is coming in here it's the 10th studio album released in 1982 Mechanics uh, Featured Phil Mogg, Paul Chapman, Neil Carter, Pete Way and Andy Parker. Uh, the Writer is the first track. Nice little rocker this is. Best one on the album, I think. Uh, then we get something else. Again, not a very good cover of an Eddie Cochran song. Back to My Life. That's ah, quite solid. Um, you'll Get Love. It's all right. Not the best track on the album, but it has got a great pay, bass line from Pete Way. Um, doing all right for you. Great drumming on this from Andy Parker and some solid riffs from Paul Chapman. Uh, we Belong. Bright little rocker, as I call this. Really good. Let It Rain. Solid track. Great bass line from Pete Way. Awesome stuff. Let me get Terry. This is my least favourite track by um, UFO and I can't believe I missed this completely out. Feel it. Very ordinary. Nothing special though. Uh, when, um, Dreaming. This track is okay. Pretty cool. I've got mixed feelings about this album. Um, it's a good rock album but it hasn't. it's lost that UFL sound, if you get what I mean. So it gets an RTO ranking of 8.7. Now you can go back to your regular ranking without all the cock ups. This is not the album, this is that EP that came out, released in 1988, Ain't Misbehaving. Uh, this features Phil Mogg, Tommy McLennan, Paul Gray, Jim Simpson. Six tracks. Very good tracks. Uh, they've sort of from from going on from Mr. Mania to this, they've sort of ditched that uh, 80s sound a little bit. And they're sort of about going back to basics, and it's worked. Very good album. I consider it an album because there's some good tracks. Uh, Between Rock and a Hard Place, solid little rocker. Really, really good track. Another another great track. Another Saturday Night got an incredible guitar solo from Tommy after the war, war at the war with the world solid track not a bad tool hunger in the night grinding rocker this is one of the reasons I've had to, I put this out this EP in the rankings it's absolutely belting easy money solid track uh, Rock Boys Rock, again, this is why it's been included in the ranking. I love this, my favourite track on this EP. 
Lonely City Cities of, of the Heart Solid Track. So that's why it was included. I love this little EP. Great album. <laughs> Short but sweet but fantastic. And I give it an RTO ranking of 8.9. Fantastic little album. Okay then, coming in at number 13. Released in 1992, High Stakes and Dangerous Men. It's the only UFO album to feature Lawrence Archer, Clive Edwards. And obviously they're both former members of Wild Horses. Um, Lawrence Archer of course went on to play with Grand Slam. And the last time I saw him he was in Mark Stanway's Kingdom of Madness. The old boy... Um, old Boys Magnum Band. Uh, so it features Phil Mogg on vocals, Lawrence Archer on guitar, Pete Way guitar, bass of course, drums were by Clive Edwards and additional muse musicians. The keyboards were done by the one and only Mr Don Airy, again who's played on everybody's albums. Uh, Borderline is the first track, nice little rocker Great guitar work from Lawrence Archer. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet him at that gig, um, the Kingdom of Madness um, gig, and I spent some time talking to him. Really nice chat. And was t I talked about this album, and he was really pleased that someone remembers that he was in UFO. And I just said to him that the your solo on Borderline was absolutely out the top drawer. You know, as good as Michael Schenker, and uh, he, he, he liked that. We had a real great talk about this album, in fact. Uh, Primed for Time, another great bass line from Pete Way here, great little rocker. She's the one. Not my favourite track, a little bit off for me. Ain't Sweet, pure rock and roll done in the style of, of course, UFO. Don't Want to Lose You. This is a little bit different. It's got 50s feel to it. It's a solid track. Nice backing vocals. Uh, Burning Fire, solid track. Bass line is good. Again, Lawrence Archer. He is a good guitarist. Uh, it's got great riffing in this. And I said to him, what was it like playing with Pete Way and, uh, and Phil Mock? He says, he said, Phil Mock's a moody old bugger. But what a, he's a terrific um, rump man. He said and Pete Way was said, one of the best bass players that he's played with, which is a nice compliment. Um, running Up the Highway, solid rock track, just what you want. Uh, Backdoor Man, I love this track. Slow rock stuff, brilliant. One of those nights, it's a bit radio friendly, but I do like it. Uh, Revolution. This reminds me of something off one of them earlier tra albums, which is really, really good. Love me, love deadly love. This is this is a galloping riff with this great, great keyboard from uh, Don Airy. Good song. Let the good times roll. My favourite classic UFO song. Uh, as I said, great album, uh, one of the most underrated UFO albums. Uh, as I said, spent a time talking to Lawrence Archer about this album. He, I mean, he said he said he enjoyed working on it, and I can understand why it's a solid album. So I'll give this album an RTO ranking of nine out of ten. Okay, coming in at number twelve. The 11th studio album released in 1983, Making Contact. First album without Pete Way, and after this, this was a bad tour when they did, took this out. So Phil Mark said, Right, that's enough, had enough of this. And we thought that was it, but obviously it wasn't. He just took a, took a, few, a few years off. Uh, we have got on this album here, Phil Mogg on vocals, Paul Chapman on guitars, Neil Carter, 
keyboards, bass, backing vocals, Andy Parker on the drums. First track, Blinded by a Light. Love this track to bits. I've seen them do this live. Uh, they opened up with this at Nebworth. Brilliant track. Neil's keyboards in this is great. I do like Neil Carter as a musician and a writer as well. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Diesel in the Dust, this is terrific. Uh, the bass line in this is great. Great drumming from Parker. Really, really good. Full for your love, good song. Solid. You and me. Love the bass line and keyboards in this stunning track. Great little rocker. When it's time to rock, another really good rocker opening to this. I love the keyboards. Guitar work is brilliant. Epic drums. Cheesy chorus line, but it's still a good track. Um, the Way the wind, Wild Wind Blows. Love Neil Car Carter's keyboard runs on this track. Paul Chapman's guitar work is again outstanding. Terrific track. Yeah, Call My Name, it's not the best track. It's got that 80s feel to it, I'm afraid. Uh, All Over You, great rocker. Paul Chapman just <laughs> blows it out of the park on this. Great riffing, great guitar solo, awesome stuff. Um, no Getaway, great vocal performance and fill on this one. Very solid track. Uh, Push It's Love, Andy Parker's drumming on this is brilliant, crushes it. Very, very heavy bass line to this as well. Everybody knows, great little rocker to end the album. Okay, when this originally came back out in 1983, the production on it was dire. And there was another album I thought, oh, some great songs on here. But then in 2009, it was remastered and for the better because this album is awesome uh, I'd prefer the, the remastered version if it hadn't have been remastered this would have been a bit further down but because it's been uh, remastered and you actually get the definitive versions of these tracks it went up in my rankings so I'll give you a uh, RTO ranking of 9.1. Time for another drink. We're starting to dry up again. Right. Coming in at number 11. 16th album. The last to feature. Michael Schenker in his return. Uh, so we've got Phil Mogg, Michael Schenker, Pete Way, Ainsley Dunbar, and Kevin Carlson on the keyboards. First track, Outlaw Man. Oh, can't you tell Michael Schenker's back? Ooh, terrific. Great riffs on this. Awesome stuff. Uh, Quicksilver Rider. Oh, rich guitar work, Michael Schenker here. The guy is unbelievable. Not even after all these years. Absolutely brilliant. Serenity. Love this track. My favourite on the album. Absolute killer guitar solo for Michael Schenker on this. Awesome stuff. Dead Man Walking simple rock and roll track but when you've got Michael Schenker playing guitars on it it gives you a little bit more awesome track Shadow Dancer oh Schenker's opening riff on this is just mind blowing Dr driving riffs and Phil's voice on this is just mind blowing absolutely brilliant then we've got Someone's Gotta power Pay. The combination between Pete Way and Michael Schenker is something else. 
it was just so nice to hear these two playing together again absolutely awesome Sea of Faith it's not a bad track not my favourite bit of a filler Fighting Man oh great riff great riffing from Schenker top drawster perfect group view classic Schenker guitar playing on here you get everything shredding riffs solos something special from him crossing over very solid track Hawaii this is a very short little piece it's just Michael Schenker having a little bit of a jam nice way to end his second stunt in UFO this is a fantastic album but it's I'd say it's the weaker of the reunion of with Schenker but it's still got some absolutely mind-blowing guitar stuff on it and I give it an RTO ranking of 9.2 okay then top 10 moving into the creme de la creme so coming in at number 10 is the 17th album released in 2004 you are here first album to feature band new band members Vinnie Moore and Jason Bonham yes Jason Bonham actually played in UFO uh, so the lineup was Phil Mark Vinnie Moore Paul Raymond Pete Way and Jason Bonham when daylight goes down just like his dad Jason hits the drums harder than anybody I know Apes are awesome drumming on this Phil Mogg is great and Jason does some backing vocals up to top it off absolutely brilliant track Black Cold Coffee great rocker again Jason's drumming is just mind blowing the Wild One opens up with a great riff from Vinnie Moore also a strong strong drum performance again he is a fantastic drummer Give It Up solid track it's not spectacular but it, it's it's okay Call Me another song with driving riffs great drum bass line good song slipping away Uh, it's a bit of a funny song this is it, it loses itself it does it want to be a ballad does it want to be a rocker it can't make its mind up uh, the spark that's is a solid performance Vinnie Moore's guitar work is superb on this sympathy a uh, bit of a filler for me it's one of the weaker songs Mr Freeze nice little rocker this one is Jello Mon Jello Man, sorry. Love this. Thunderous drumming from Bonham, of course. And great vocals from Phil. Adding with Vinnie Moore's riffing, great stuff. Baby Blue, nice semi acoustic start to this, and then it goes into a great rocker. Swallow. Great track. Drumming from Jason, brilliant. Vinnie Moore. This album is fantastic and it's such a shame that they didn't make more albums with Jason on the drums because he is terrific. Uh, Phil's dr singing on this was out of the top drawer as well and I give it an RTO ranking of 9.3. Okay, coming in at number 9 is the 15th album released in the year 2000, Covenant this is an album of studio stuff with Michael Schenker uh, and then the second disc is Live in the USA collection of classic songs performed uh, but Michael Schenker had one of his hissy fits so he didn't go on tour but he come back for Sharks so in the studio we had Phil Mogg, Michael Schenker, Pete Waite, Ainsley Dunbar and then on the live bit 
Simon Wright, yes, Simon Wright again makes an appearance on the RTO. Uh, on the drums and Paul Raymond came in and did guitar and keyboards got some great tracks on here Love Is Forever here we go again more Michael Schenker booming riffs solid uh, Unraveled great play between Pete Way and Michael Schenker on this and Ainsley Dunbar, good drummer. You've got to remember, this is the guy that drummed on White's Days 1987. That's he's a good drummer. Um, really, really good track. Uh, Miss the Lights. Some more, more great stuff from Michael Schenker. It's a delight to listen to Michael Schenker play guitar. One of my favourite guitarists, Michael Schenker. Uh, Midnight Train love this this is to me is a modern day classic because it's got a classic sound of Pete Way Michael Schenker and Phil singing can't get any better than that Fool's Gold oh, one of Michael Schenker's best ever guitar solos on this well ever, anything he's done it's one of them tracks that builds up and builds up like certain other tracks I'm not going to say which ones because that'll spoil it uh, but we'll be talking about them soon of course uh, that's why I love it uh, In the Middle of Madness Michael Schenker again brilliant stuff A Smell of Money more driving riffs more thumping bass line what a camp combination Rise Again Again, it's up there with Midnight Train, I, but these both these tracks are my favourite tracks. Great rocker that is. Uh, Serenade, very pleasant song. Uh, Cowboy Joe, more classic riffing from uh, Michael. The World in His Dark, Very, very good guitar riffs and brilliant solo in this. Can't go wrong there. Uh, so what we get on the um, live CD, we get Mother Mary, The Kids, Let It Roll, Out on the Street, brilliant version of Venus. Push, push to the limit and love to love. Another stunning album to feature, Michael Schenker, of course. Uh, absolute belter. Even the live stuff, and he hasn't got... Um, Michael on it but it's still got a good the tracks on there are pretty good so I'll give it an RTO ranking of 9.2 ok coming in at number 8 it's the 14th album the first of the reunion with Michael Schenker and the return of Paul Raymond and founding drummer Andy Parker. So you've got quite a, I'd say, when you look at it, I think you've got here the definitive lineup of UFO, without doubt. Phil Mogg on vocals, Michael Schenker, guitar, Paul Raymond on keyboards and guitar, Pete Way on the bass, and Andy Parker. What can you say? You know when you go through bands, what is your favourite lineup of a band, including everyone that's played when they played in it? I'd say this is my favourite lineup of um, UFO. Uh, first track, Self Made Man. Once you heard that first riff on this album, you go, "Yay, Michael is back!" And back he was, strong as ever. Venus great track uh, it's great live it's great on that little live package the keyboards from Paul on this is superb and then you get one of Michael Schenker's signature riffs and then you get his little guitar breaks and it fantastic push to a limit just a great classic UFO song to me the bass line on here from Pete 
is just fantastic. Stopped by a bullet of love. Love this track. Keyboards from Paul Raymond. Spot on. Schenker just working his guitar to the bow. Phil singing his heart out. What more do you want? Darker Days. This is the best track that this lineup ever did. The bass line is awesome. It's got every element of a classic UFO song bringing all their experience together to make one awesome track. Definitely my top 10 of uh, UFO tracks. Running on empty. It starts off very acoustic, very nice, very slowing. Whoa, this is nice. And then all of a sudden you get a killer guitar solo from Michael Schenker. Woof. Terrific track. Uh, knock Knock. Bass line from this of course is brilliant. Dreaming of Summer. Another mixture of great riffs, good bass line that drives round the song and everyone works around it. Okay, now we get the downside of this album. Doctor Doctor 1995. Do I need to hear a re-recorded version of Doctor Doctor? Very simple. The answer is no. Uh, lights out. I refer you to the answer I gave for the previous <laughs> song. No. Uh, let me go to Fortune Town. Nice heavy riffs here. Great finger playing from Michael Schenker on this. And Phil Mogg is just having a whale of a time singing. Okay, next track, I Will Be There, done by MSG. Do I need to hear this? No, I don't. I've already got it, thank you. <laughs> I put it on a UFO open. Okay, but this is one track I do like, and I hadn't heard it. It's um, called Public Enemy, Enemy Number One. It's from one of Paul Raymond's projects. Um, I'd never heard this out track until I bought the, this album. Well, I think it's quite good actually. Um, I haven't heard the Paul Raymond project version yet, but I will at some stage, no doubt. But without a doubt, this is the first uh, album from the lineup. This lineup, Walk on Water from 1995. I'd say it's the best one. Uh, trap the rehash rubbish. I think I would have ranked this a little bit higher. But um, I mean, the, the rehash versions are not too bad. I mean, the guitar solo on Doctor Doctor is pretty cool, and the riffing on Lights Out. But I don't want to hear it because well, I've got the originals. But I still give this album an RTO ranking of nine point three. Okay then, coming in at number seven. Ninth album. The Wild, The Willing and The Innocent. This features Phil Mogg on vocals, Paul Chapman on guitars, Neil Carter is playing saxophone on Lonely Heart, bit of keyboards, guitar and backing vocals, Pete way on the drum on the bass line and Andy Parker on the drums an additional um, musician was John Solomon who played some keyboards but he's uncredited on this album uh, first train first track chain chains a good opening track for this album some solid work from Andy Parker Phil Mogg is great on this track long gone one of my favourite tracks by UFO. Just hovering outside my top 10. Got a great drum and of course the bass line from Pete Way is totally out of the top drawer. Then we get The Wild, The Willing and The Innocent. Classic track from UFO. One of the top tracks. It's Killing Me. I love the bass start at the beginning of this. I just love listening to Pete Way playing the bass guitar and the drumming complements the bass line as well. 
terrific song making moves it's just classic sounding UFO great guitar solo from Paul Chapman awesome awesome stuff great lineup this was uh, Lonely Heart solid little rocker like all the songs on this album pretty solid uh, couldn't get it right it's got one of them classic intros to a UFO song great guitar work then you get Pete Way coming in and then Andy Parker crashes into it and then Phil starts singing just love how UFO started their tracks everyone came in separately and then it went boom uh, Profession of Violence great slow track this is one of the best ones terrific guitar solo from Mark, Mr Chapman on this production again on this when it first came out was not very good again this was remastered and it just showed what quality this album is and I give it an RTO ranking of 9.4 ok coming in at number 6 fifth album released in 1976 no heavy petting this was the first time they brought in a keyboard player and they brought in Danny Paroli from Heavy Metal Kids who we did last week so we got Phil Mogg, Michael Schenker, Danny Paroli, Pete Way and Andy Parker opens up with natural thing classic song classic song opens up the great classic al live album of course got great riffs in this great track and then we get another classic I'm a loser very country in places great guitar piano work from Danny uh, one of my favorite tracks by the band terrific song can you hear can you roll her again this is just full of classic songs great drumming from Andy Parker thumping pay, bass line from Pete Way all the way through cork over track Belladonna great guitar work from um, Michael on this this album is it's just like a mini greatest hits album these albums all these songs are solid uh, reasons love from that opening riff from Michael Schenker Pete Way coming in Andy Parker killing on the drums Phil Mogg joins in with a great vocal best track on the album Highway Lady another great classic rocker on with the action Michael Schenker again on fire his riffs are ripping his guitar solo is fantastic A Fall in Love another great rocker brilliant Martian Landscape surely one of the best deep cut tracks from um, this band fantastic um, all I can say, I love this album. I love all the albums going into the top. Now, the thing is, I love the every album the same, and I've got the same sort of affection. So I had to far the way I've had to rank this is just purely on the times how much I play them over the last twelve months. I mean, I give this album. An RTO ranking of 9.5. Okay, coming in at number five, eighth studio album released in 1980, No Place to Run. Uh, first album that featured Paul Chapman, who replaced Michael Schenker. Again, a classic lineup, great songs on this. Phil Mock, vocals, Paul Chapman, lead guitar, Paul Raymond, key, keyboards, and guitar, whoops a daisy, Pete Way on the bass, Andy Parker drums. 
first track is Alpha Centauri. This is one of them awesome intro guitar pieces, and I'd say it's one of the best ones I've got on any album I own. Paul Raymond's keyboards on this are awesome, and then that steady little bit of bass from Andy Parker. Great. Then we get letting go. Great track. One of my favourites. Again, hovering on that uh, outside the top ten of songs. Classic song. Mystery Train. Fantastic song. Classic, classic UFO. The Fire Burns Tonight. Again, great bass line, great drumming. That UFO engine room, blistering. And Chapman's guitar solos are just out of this world on this. Gone in the night. Class. Brilliant solo. Fantastic. Young Blood. Uh, Pete Way's bass line in this is just awesome. Andy Parker's drums, they play so well together. And then the rest of the band comes in. Title track, No Place to Run. Fantastic stuff. Pete's bass line drives this song. Take it or leave it. Another one of them good UFO slow songs. Fantastic stuff. Money, money. I've never been keen on this track. I don't know why. Any day. Pete Wade, what a bass player. Awesome bit of bass work on this. Makes this track. Well, this album is my favourite non Michael Schenker UFO album. It's classic. And I give it an RTO ranking of 9.6. Okay, coming in at number four. It's the third studio album released in 1974. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Can't even say it. This was the first album, of course, that featured Michael Schenker, who was 18 at the time. I mean, he made his first album at 16. <laughs> uh, so he replaced Mick Bolton. So we got... Phil Mogg, Michael Schenker, Pete Waite, Andy Parker. Okay, first track, Too Young to Know. Great guitar work. What a way to Michael Schenker to start his work. Great solo from him. Superb track. Crystal Light. This is just basic um, rock and roll. Uh, there's nothing fancy about it, but the guitar work is really, really good. Then we get Doctor Doctor. Okay, overplayed. But the beauty of this version, you get that great, great intro on the keyboards. And then you get Andy coming in and Michael and builds up into that awesome riff. I mean the riff on this is great, but it, it's it's just playing to death. I don't dislike this track, don't get me wrong, I think it's a great track, but when you hear it on the radio, not this one again. I mean, there are, the, there are better songs by UFO, but it's still a good track. Uh, Space Child, ah, oh, this is something left over from them Space Rock days. Uh, very good, nice guitar work from Michael. Then we do get a classic. One of my favourite tracks by um, UFO, Rock Bottom. Stonking stuff. That opening riff and the thumping drums and Pete Way's bass. Phil singing. Great crowd pleaser. Everyone sings out their socks. Great track. Then we get oh, oh My, Solid Rock Track, Driving Riffs from Michael Schenker. Time on My Hands, Acoustic Number, it's a very nice tune. Built for Comfort, 
classic blues song from Willie Dixon, of course. Great cover. Uh, one thing that UFO, all through their career, when it comes to playing the blues, they are good. Great stuff. Lipstick Traces. This has got that, it's an instrumental track. It's got some feels of the 50s on this. Showing off uh, Schenker's skills here. Great track. You've got to remember, you know, for an 18 year old to come up with this sort of stuff is fantastic. Good stuff. Then we get Queen of the Deep, another great little track, great guitar work from the young Michael Schenker. I'd say this is the album that really set uh, UFO off on their road to success. Uh, great album. It's sort of their, their transition albums, like it's still got their little bits of. Um, space Rock and some really produced two classic UFO songs of course Doctor Doctor and Rock Bottom um, one of my favourite albums from the 70s and I give it an RTO ranking of 9.7 ok then coming in at number 3 oh this was hard this because every these th these next three albums there isn't a bad track on them there's I love them all. Very hard this was. Uh, so the fourth album released in 1975. Force It. First album to chart in America as well. So this is the big one. Um, we got Phil Mark, of course, Michael Schenker, Pete Way, Andy Parker, and Chick Churchill did the keyboards. First track, Let It Roll. The classic Let It Roll. Bassline for Mr. Pete Way is awesome. Uh, great vocal from Phil, of course. Great track. Let me get my favourite track off the album Shoot Shoot. There's not much you can tr say about this if you're a fan. It's just one of the greats. Uh, totally classic with that great opening riff awesome high flyer nice mellow track this is nice acoustic work but then you get an amazing guitar solo from Michael Schenker lost lost love any track that starts off on the guitar solo like that you know you're in for a great track and then you get some nice riffs from Michael Schenker bass line from Pete Way solid as ever Phil Mug singing his socks off awesome out in the street there's, there's something about a song by UFO that starts off with Pete Way's bass and then you get a little bit of piano then you get the drums of um, Andy Parker again this is just a pure classic Phil Mogg's best performance one of his best performances with UFO terrific song um, Mother Mary great rock track that was very good on that live album that little live album and kind of confident uh, too much of nothing again classic track the bass line and the riffs work around each other complementing each other Michael Schenker shredding on this is just awesome dance your life away the riff in this is so catchy Great drumming again from Andy Parker. There's no, there's, I just, it's awesome. Pete Way's brilliant. And then the last track, The Kids, Between the Walls. Start to this is quite wonderful, nice piece of music, and then goes rocking up into a great rock track. As I said, this is so hard to rank these top three, but again, this is a fantastic album, which I play a lot. And I'll give it an RTO ranking of 9.8. Okay, coming in number two. Seventh album. This just missed out on a couple of tracks. Uh, came out in 1978. Obsession. It's the final studio album to feature Michael until his band's return. Uh, so we've got Phil Mark, Michael Schenker, Paul Raymond and Pete Wayne and Andy Parker. 
opens up with a classic of all classics, Only You Can Rock Me. It starts rocky, goes slow, riffs, guitar solos, great song live, regardless of who's playing on it. Absolutely out the top drawer for me. Definitely top 10 songs for me. Second track, Pack It Up and Go. Terrific drumming from Andy Parker. Absolutely solid as a rock, that drummer. And then you get little licks from Michael Schenker. You just can't get better, any better than that. Then we get the lovely little Aubrey Hill. It's far more I expect to find this sort of thing on a Jethro Tull album than the UFO album, but it's wonderful. Looking out for number one. The inclusion of the strings on this is a bit different, but it's superb. Great track and a great guitar solo. Hot and ready. Love guitar work on this. Michael at his best. And it goes great with Pete Way's bass line on this. Then we get the classic Cherry. I love the start to this. That bass line. And then everyone sort of adds in and, bring, and builds it up. And nice little rock, a fantastic track, Cherry. Uh, you Don't Fool Me. More classic riffing. Riffing? R <laughs> riffing. Get your words out. Great solid track. And then we get a reprise of looking out for number one. But this time you just get to be a piano orchestra and Michael Schenker. One more for the rodeo. Uh, one of the weaker tracks on the album, and I think this is one of them that kept it off the number one spot. Uh, Born to Lose, again, not a particular favourite of mine. I know there's people out there that love it, but I don't like it. Uh, absolutely solid album, but what I think kept this off number one is the last two tracks. I don't particularly like them and I think it's sort of it's an anti climax to a brilliant album, but I still give it an RTO ranking of nine point nine. So my favourite album by UFO and has been for a very, very, very long time. Um play this one tremendously a lot. Uh, released 1977, the sixth album, and it of course is Lights Out. We have got Phil Mogg, Michael Schenker, Paul Raymond, Pete Wayne, and Andy Parker. It opens up with Too Hot to Handle. So if I was doing the top 10 singles of UFO or songs, this would be my number three track. I just love it. Great track, great licks, great catchy vocals, fantastic stuff. Just another suicide. I love that combination of piano and the bass. Another great guitar solo from Michael Schenker. Try Me. The combination of the strings and the piano and Phil Mogg's voice on this. Brilliantly sung, brilliant, brilliant track. Then we get my number two in my th song by UFO Lights Out, of course. I love this riff and the bass line, and then you get them little the electrifying little bits of guitar from Schenker. Just a fantastic track. One of the best rock tracks ever written. Great stuff. Uh, then we get in Getting Ready. Again, one of Pete Way's best bass lines. He drives this song. Everyone else works around him on this one. Terrific song. And then we get a cover of a track called Alone Again or uh, by a band called Love Cover. Um very good this is better than their original 
absolutely brilliant track. Electric Phase. This is a nice little blues rocker. Something that we'll get used to for the rest of their career. Okay, the last track on the album is the best track they've ever released. Is the best, one of the best rock songs ever. It is Love to Love. What can you say about this awesome track? The way it just builds up and builds up. Um, I love it. The start, you get the cymbals and the bass line and the keyboard, and then you do, then all of a sudden Michael comes in and that riff just builds the power of this song. Um, this is Phil Mogg's best ever vocal performance on a on a U, U, UFO song. Um, I've seen a few people do covers of this. And there's only one band that have done it as good as this, and that was Europe. This is truly one of the great rock songs. And I've seen that obviously seen it live is wonderful. I mean, the best version of this is actually off the um, Strangers in the Night album, which, which is one of the best live albums. I'm not going to say too much because obviously I'm going to do something about my favourite live albums of all time. Uh, so I'm not going to say much more about live albums. But the reason why this is my number one, if it contains my top three favourite songs by UFO, it's going to be a no-brainer, isn't it really? Um... I just love them three tracks. I think mean, this album is just solid all the way through. So it only gets one uh, one ranking, I'm afraid, and that's 10 out of 10 from me. This is just an awesome album with three of the best tracks ever written by UFO. Okay, that was a long one. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Put your comments about UFO. Um, I'm going to try and get tickets to go to the last shows. Uh, you know, they're, f they're a quintessential rock band from England who de de who deserved more um, praise than they got, but they are truly an awesome band. Um, so that's it for today. Um, got a good show tomorrow bit of a proggy show tomorrow uh, we're going to do a then and now on Genesis and look at the two albums that people obviously forget, their first and their last they're only interested in the bit in the middle um, we can do that and then you've got my tw 20 random pulled out singles and my singles box which is going to be fun I'm going to look at them, rank the covers, how I like them. So um, that's that tomorrow. So until tomorrow, I will see you all tomorrow. And I will be announcing the poll winner of which artist we're going to do after we've looked at all of Paul Rogers. And at the moment, it's John Lord. He's still winning. So. For those Richie Blackmore fans and Gillen fans, get out there and put your vote in. You've got until tomorrow to do it. Put the in the in the comments below here, or go on to Facebook, or go on to uh, Twitter, and register your vote. Take care for now. Bye.